Well, we're having church today, aren't we? Huh? Yeah. So, this is um, from an elementary school test uh, where they were asking kids questions about the Old and the New Testament. And this is what the kids actually wrote down. Just a few of the answers. Lot's wife. Remember Lot's wife? She was a pillar of salt by day, but a ball of fire during the night. Hmm? Where do kids get this stuff? The people who followed the Lord were called the decibels. Yeah. The epistles were the wives of the apostles. Yeah. And this one, again, it's from children. Christians have only one spouse. This is called monotony. <laughs> well, they're kind of cute. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about flying high with faith. We believe in the science of mind teaching that the divine presence desires only good for all of us, that that's just the nature of God, the infinite presence that is love and intelligence itself only desires that which it is for each and every one of us. You know, so um, the faith it takes to have the life you really want is what I'm interested in today. You know, like what would the level of faith have to be for me, for my life to be the way I imagine it could be in every single area. Now, I think that, you know, this is one of those times when imagination is really important in metaphysics. We have to see within our mind's eye what isn't obvious or apparent just yet. You know, this is like when Martin Luther King says, I have a dream. The dream he's talking about is something he sees on the unseen side that hasn't manifested in form yet. Mm -hmm. But part of how it's going to manifest in form is that he's already seeing it, right? And that's what we do again and again in the science of mind. You know, faith is very, very important in a metaphysical teaching because we have to know, I mean, like really know, like, you know, when you know something, right? And nobody can talk you out of it. We have to know with our deepest heart of hearts that it's already done, that the healing has taken place, that the need is fulfilled. Whatever it is, we have to know, even though the appearances may speak to the contrary, that on the unseen side, the universe, God, spirit, has already said yes, and it's done. So if you have faith, I believe you will not frustrate the divine potential that is within you, because faith, it seems to me, is what greases the wheel. I, I grew up in church. I went to church all the time as a kid. It seemed like all the time. It was just regularly. But it seemed like all the time. And, um, and one of the things that I learned in church growing up that has served me to this day is that we said our prayers every night before we went to bed. I don't know if you were brought up with that, but that was just important. And you know, that has just always stayed with me. That was like a really good practice. I remember my mother, I'd say, well, why do I have to say my prayers? And she'd say, well, you know, maybe today was a great day and you don't really feel like you need any help. But... You want to be in the practice because of praying every night because the day's going to come when you're going to want God's help, is what she would say to me. You know, so she said, so you're already going to be used to it. And I think this is absolutely true for us as students of the science of mind, that we do a spiritual practice. We try to uh, touch the hem of the garment or know our oneness with God, however we would articulate that, because down the road, our faith is going to be even more important, that circumstances will unfold in our life, and we're, it's going to require us to have a lot of faith. I was just back east for a few days. I was visiting my mother, who um, you may remember I've told you that she is in a, a home for people with memory issues. And, um, and i got to tell you, that, is just, that was just such a hard thing, making that shift from her home into uh, assisted living and then into memory care. Um, and I would tell you that my siblings and I are all in 100% agreement this is the best place for her. She's well cared for. She likes it there. She really does. She's having a great time. She's got friends. She's busy all the time doing stuff. It's going as well as it could. And, and, and when I asked her, I said, how is it here? And she says, oh, it's wonderful. 
people are lovely. The food's fantastic. The help is great. So nothing better. The process is all in me, right? You get that? So this is a process I'm having. And my process is that I have to have great faith that this is the right thing. You know, as hard as it is to wrap my head around this, this is the right place for her to be. She is well cared for. She's safe. Um, it's close to her friends. I mean, there are just so many good things about it. But I'm not there to see it every day. And what that requires of me is to have a level of faith in the unseen for me to pray and affirm and know that things are unfolding exactly as they should for her highest and greatest good, for the evolution of her soul, for everything she came here to experience. I have to know that that's what's taking place. Even though there's a conversation in my head that goes blah all the time, you know, because that's what my head does sometimes. It just goes, wow, this is not in my control. And I do like that illusion of control. I do. I'm very fond of the illusion of control. Um, the other piece that was quite wonderful when I went back east is um, my nephew and his wife, who I'm very close to, they've just had their second child. And she was two weeks old. And she is about the size of a good burrito. Yeah, she is. And as much as I love a burrito, she is even cuter. Oh my god, I couldn't put her down. I mean, honestly, she wasn't as big as my forearm. She was just this tiny little thing. Her name is Valentina. Is that not the sweetest thing? I was, I was beside myself. I was just dumbstruck stupid. I was so in love with this little being. You know, and so I think, well, I was thinking about that, and, and, and of course she has a little brother who's 18 months older who I'm also madly in love with. I didn't even know that these chambers of my heart could open, and I love these little beings who not long ago didn't even exist on the earth plane. And now here I am, just madly in love with these little beings. And then I get in the car and I have the news on. And I hear the news about whatever, just whatever the news was. I don't even remember anything in particular. And I thought, this is exactly why. I just saw those kids, this is exactly why I need to have faith and I need to pray every day and I need to lend my consciousness to the ongoing evolution and improvement of what's happening on Earth because I want the world to be a good place for them. You know, I want there to be uh, a world that they can enjoy and play in and, and do all the things that, that we love to do. So actually seeing my, my new little rel oh, and the great thing about Valentina's, she's the first girl in a generation. So, so Everybody is just beside themselves, you know. Uh, this child already has more clothes than she can wear in the course of a lifetime, you know. And, and she's two weeks old, you know. But it just, hey, I, I admit it. It's really fun to shop for little girls. Oh, my god. Little girls' clothes are great. I, 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 I can't leave Target without spending $100. I don't know what happens. It's just, you know. But the great thing is at Target, you get like 26 outfits for that. It's amazing, you know. So anyway. But uh, th so I bring this back to the idea of faith and how important it is that this, in the Bible it says faith is the evidence of things hoped for and not yet seen. So when I'm praying, when I'm meditating, when I'm doing my spiritual work, thinking about these little beings, I'm, I am speaking my word, I'm visualizing, I'm holding a place in consciousness for a greater good on earth that will be a wonderful place for them to grow up. Now, I don't see all the evidence of that just now. Now, I don't think it's, you know, all horrible. Of course not. You know, most of it is good. Here we are. But there are things that could be improved. We all understand that, you know? There are things that could just be better. I, if nothing else, I'd say I, my prayer is for the world to be a peaceful place, you know, so that all children could grow up in, in, in a peaceful world. You know? but, but then there's even more that I would like to see in the world for them. And how is that going to take place? Well, the science of mind teaches me again and again and again that it starts inside of me, right? So if I'm an angry person, an angry person is not going to make a peaceful world. If I'm an unloving person, an unloving person is not going to make a loving world. Because science of mind tells us again and again, everything starts inside of us. Oh my gosh. Sometimes that's just so hard. 
I want it to start somewhere else, you know, in someone else. I want it to be all about something outside of me. But Jesus gave this wonderful teaching, and the teaching that Jesus gave was, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and everything else will be added. Now, that's a very high spiritual teaching, I believe. But what we're saying here is, look, go for God, and all the other stuff will take care of itself. You work on cultivating your relationship with a higher power, with infinite loving spirit, with the spirit of love and intelligence that created the universe. You work on your relationship with that, on really knowing your oneness with that power, and everything else that we require, that we need to have a healthy, healthy, happy, loving, abundant life will be added to us. Right? In Science of Mind, if someone is experiencing some difficulty, some particular limitation, you know, we're not going to let them off the hook and say, well, this is just bad luck. This is, you know, people say, you know, and, and I love this when people say, well, you know, when my ship comes in, I'm going to really be different when my ship comes in. And, and I always have to ask, but did you send a ship out? You know, did, no, really, did you send a ship out? And by the way, when your ship comes in, are you willing to go down to the dock and unload it yourself? Because I think that's part of it. You know, um, on the outer plane, a fundamental difficulty is, um, well, so here it is. We know that the outer plane is the level of manifestation. But that's, this level of manifestation is a reflection of our own inner consciousness. And what I mean by our consciousness when I'm talking about this today is the ideas that we have, that we come back to again and again, the attitudes that we maintain most of the time, the emotional state that we bring to our life every day, you know, uh, the states of mind that we generally are in as we are living our life. See, I think all of that is contributing contributing to the outer manifestation. So if whether you're talking about a demonstration of greater health or a demonstration of greater prosperity, you know, um, it, it doesn't really matter because the principles involved are the same. It is the consciousness on the inside that, that attracts, right? So we understand because we've heard again and again, you know, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free free from the problems of human existence. You know, but, but initially, when we start to know the truth, we have to know the truth and have faith because we may not see the results of knowing the truth immediately. You know, because we, we live life from the inside out, that's, that's really the science of mind teaching. It's not what happens out here, around us, to us, but what we do in here, what we think in response to what's happening in the world around us. So a good place to begin, I think always, is to just accept responsibility for our thoughts. Yeah, I'm responsible for what I think. Nobody is making me think something different. It's all mine. So, because, and the reason why this is important is this, is this will help you, this will support you in taking charge of your experience. I think it's very important that we avoid the negative conversations about health or the economy, you know, um, or other people. You know, don't say anything you don't want to say yes to. Because if you're talking about it, you're telling the universe, I'm in favor of this. Even if you're talking about somebody you don't like or something that's not good in your world, talk about what you want to see, what you want to live, what you want to be growing in your life. Now, in our teaching in the science of mind, we believe that there is no limitation in spirit, but there may be a consciousness of limitation in me, right? Because the real us, though, the spiritual us can never lack. The spiritual us can never lack health. The spiritual us can never lack supply. The spiritual us can never be in lack of love. Right? That's, that's just not possible. So the way Mike Todd said this years ago, he says, many times I have been broke, but I have never been poor. And, the way I, and I like that, you know, because he understands it's a thing of consciousness. Now, I would say many times I have lost my way. Anybody lose your way? I've lost my way many times. But I have never been separate from God. And this is what we teach is the most important thing in the science of mind, to know your oneness with God. So even though we can get way off on a tangent in some crazy direction in our life, the thing is, if we know our oneness with God, it all comes back together. You know, that God can only do for us what God can do through us. We teach that. And, and that energy of God flows through our consciousness. It flows through our level of faith. 
So before we try to fix anything out in the world, what we need to do is we need to raise our own consciousness. It's always about our consciousness. You know, there is nothing inherently spiritual about um, being sick or ill. There's nothing inherently spiritual about lack. There's nothing inherently spiritual about being alone, unless that really, really works for you. You know, but I don't, I don't, I don't know anybody who's struggling financially and it really is working. And they say, I, how's it going? Oh, I'm really struggling financially. How's that working for you? Oh, great. I love it. I, nobody says that, you know? So what, do, what does this consciousness look like? You know, well, I think it, it looks like, well, first of all, I do, we do what needs to be done. We create some order in our life. We bless whatever we have. Um, if there's more that needs to be done, we do it cheerfully, I would say. Because a consciousness that's really worth having takes maintenance. It takes some energy every day. Mm -hmm. That I have to tell myself, look, I am the consciousness of peace in my world. I am the consciousness of health. I am the consciousness of abundance. I am the consciousness of love. Because Ernest Holmes teaches us you can have what you become in consciousness. So if this is my consciousness, naturally that would come to me. You know, I think God has created an infinite universe. And here we are in a sea of infinity, each and every one of us. And you and I have to become vessels for God's infinite universe to flow through us. So, I heard somebody say this and I thought, yeah, I think this is pretty good. To ask is another way to say it's claiming, right? So we teach that it is the, <clears throat> excuse me, the father, mother, God's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. So the way to ask God for abundance, the way to ask God for health, the way to ask God for love is to create a consciousness through which abundance and love and health just naturally flow. I think it's an important moment in your life when, when, when you discover for yourself the great truth that things may happen around us and things may happen to us, but the things that really count in life are the things that happen in us. That's really, really where it counts. And, you know, and I know it's, it's not easy, but it's possible to control what goes on in our mind. You know, like how do I choose to respond here? How do I choose to respond? Because, you know, each of us, I think this is maybe a simple oversimplification, but each of us is like a living magnet, constantly drawing to us people and circumstances that are in accord with our current level of thought, in accord with our current consciousness. So if you're willing to accept full responsibility for your life, then even as your thought has contributed to where you are right now, by changing your consciousness, you absolutely change your experience of life, right? You know, that I could see health, I could see love, I could see abundance everywhere I look. You know, I could act as if it's impossible to fail. I could change the way I see myself. I could let go of limiting identities I have. You know, faith is fundamental to a great life. I believe that that's so. You know, and now we all have faith in something. Don't kid yourself. You have some faith in something. I have faith in something. Now, what we have faith in is either supporting us in our life being more of what it can divinely be, or we have faith in something that's kind of taken us down the drain. You understand what I mean. But remember, God is, trans is the transcendent whole of things of which we are all a part. Perhaps we could think of faith as a consciousness-centered in the universal source. I kind of like that, that if my consciousness is centered in the universal source, whatever it is I have need of, I'm connected to already. I'm already connected to that. You know that when we say in the science of mind, God is for me, I, see, I like to say that, that God is for me. I just think that's a really empowering thing to say. Maybe we should say that together a couple times. God is for me. God is for me. God is for me. You know what's interesting is that whenever I speak words of truth, how immediately I feel uplifted. There's something deep within me that resonates by speaking words of truth. It just sort of lifts me above condition. Now, it doesn't always happen so easily with just saying it three times. Sometimes I just have to speak words of truth or a statement or an affirmation 20 times or 50 times or just until I start to feel better. But I know I start to feel better. 
I know if I do this, if I give my attention to truth, if I start to affirm and pray and meditate, study, serve, tithe, forgive, practice gratitude, all that we teach, if I do that, I will be lifted up above the condition. God is for me. That's a great thought. It's a, I mean, it's a spiritual truth, but it's a great thought to hold in my mind all the time. I think it would really serve us when we get up in the morning to not say, I wonder what today will bring, but what can I bring to today? Mm -hmm. What can I bring to today? What kind of creativity, what kind of love can I infuse into situations? What kind of joy can I share with other people? Because I think that giving is the attitude with which you touch things, right? You know, you give your love, you give your light, you give your creativity, you give your energy into life, and life gives back to you. Re remember, the purpose of life is, is it's not um, acquisition. I think the purpose, because we're spiritual beings, the purpose of life is unfoldment and personal development and a consciousness of unity that we are one with God and with all people. In the mind of God, we're all one. So I've often heard, you know, your life is God's gift to you, and what you do with it is your gift back to God. And so I would hope for us that this week, our gift back to God is that we would have faith that God is absolutely for us. In every situation, in every relationship, every time I get in the car, every time I walk into the market, wherever I am, God is for me. Let's live with that this week. Let's pray. So we turn, thank you. So we turn our attention inward now for a moment and just remember that we are surrounded and filled with this infinite loving intelligent spirit. It's the truth about us. We are made in the image and likeness of the one life, the one love. And so in this awareness of our connection with God, with spirit, I also know that we are all connected with each other on the unseen side of life. That in the mind and in the heart of God, there's only one, and we're all it. So in this awareness of our oneness with God and with each other, I speak the word for us today that our faith deepens, our faith expands. It includes more of the spiritual truth that makes us more and more free. So I claim for each and every one of us a life that is abundant. Abundant not just in material supply, but in an awareness of our oneness with God and our connection with other people. A life that's abundant in love and health and peace of mind and every good thing. So I do declare for each and every one of us now that we move forward with a consciousness of greater faith. Because yes, God is absolutely for us. Life is for us. And I know it's done unto us as we believe. And so today we have faith. We believe only good things. So we include in our prayer our family members and friends, our parents and children, all of those we love and hold near and dear. And we know that right where they are, the fullness of God's spirit is. That divine love is revealing itself in all of its perfection right there. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in. So all those things that call at our attention, we say God is right there. That divine love manifests itself perfectly in all situations, to all people, at all times. It could not be any other way. We bless our church. We bless all churches. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. I'm certain that we are blessed by being together, that we all get raised up. And so with a full heart, I say, thank you, God. I release this word. And so it is. Amen. <laughs>